The Polish-Swedish War was a continuation of struggle between Sweden and Poland over control of Livonia and Estonia, as well as the dispute over the Swedish throne between Charles IX of Sweden and Sigismund III of Poland. Origins This conflict between the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and Sweden traces its roots to the war against Sigismund. In this civil war, Sigismund III Vasa, at one time king of both the Commonwealth and Sweden, lost the throne of Sweden. Few Commonwealth troops participated in that conflict, and it is mostly regarded as a Swedish civil war, not part of the Polish-Swedish wars. After an early stalemate, Sigismund was defeated at the Battle of Stangerbro in 1598. By 1599 Sigismund was dethroned by his uncle, Duke Charles and forced to retreat to the Commonwealth. This also spelled the end of the short-lived personal union between Poland and Sweden. However, Sigismund did not give up on regaining the Swedish throne. From then on, most of his policies would revolve around his attempts to conquer Sweden. Even though Commonwealth nobility had little will for such a long and bloody conflict, Sigismund began his plans in 1599, when he confirmed the Pact of Conventa. These documents, signed when he was elected as a king of Poland, promised that the then Swedish territory of Estonia would become part of the Commonwealth. Course. Polish confidence, Polish nobility, the Szalokta, supported this particular conflict, assuming it would be limited to Estonia only and expecting many gains in form of new lands and increases of grain export through access to Estonian ports on the Baltic Sea. In addition, Szalokta did not think highly of the Swedes, and did not expect this war to drag long or be difficult. They grossly underestimated their opponent, thinking that Poland, having been nearly undefeated in battle for over a hundred years, would be easily able to parry any attacks of the Scandinavians. The Commonwealth had nearly 10 million inhabitants, almost 10 times that of 1 million in Sweden. On the other hand, Szalokta forgot that the Commonwealth had one of the smallest military-to-population ratios in Europe, and that Sweden was able to draft a large army much more quickly than the Commonwealth, due to its centralized government and obligatory draft of free peasants. Early battles thus the Commonwealth was forced to fight on two fronts, as its armies were also needed south to deal with the Moldavian magnate wars, and Swedish forces quickly gained 3 to 1 numerical superiority. In the beginning of the war, in 1600, although a Commonwealth army under Christoph Mikolai Pyrrhon's Radziwill striking first was able to deal the Swedish forces several defeats in the open fields. Swedes took control not only of Estonia, but of most of Livonia, the Commonwealth territory south of Estonia. The Polish parliament, the same, reacted by increasing funds for the army and recalling forces and commanders from the southern front to the threatened north. In 1601 Lithuanian hetman Jan Karol Chodkiewicz and Polish Chancellor Jan Zamoyski, recalled from Moldavia, arrived in Lithuania to fight the Swedish incursion, which now threatened not only the Estonia promised by Sigismund, but all the Polish territories south of it. Chodkiewicz and Radziwill defeated the Swedes in the first major open battle of this war at Kokenhusen in early 1601. Soon afterwards, Jan Zamoyski, fresh from his victory against the Moldavians, came in to help against the Swedes, with 12,000 men, and 50 artillery pieces, 15 of which were classified as heavy. Charles was unable to deal effectively with such an army and was forced to retreat. However, during the retreat he left sizable numbers of defenders of various captured fortresses in Livonia. Zamoyski now took to siege warfare instead of chasing the retreating king, soon capturing Walmar and Felin. By 1602, the Swedes were only left with control of Rival, Panor, Hapsal and Orpate. However, Zamoyski, now 60 years old, had fallen ill and Shodkovich took command and laid siege to Dorpate. At Wessenberg, he defeated a Swedish reinforcement force under Arvid Eriksson Stalem sent to relieve the Swedish troops in Dorpate. 
The town surrendered in April 1603. Chodkowicz was appointed acting commander-in-chief of Lithuania forces after Zamoyshi's return south in 1602. Chodkovich, despite inadequate supplies and little support from the Commonwealth Sejm and King Sigismund III Vasa, brilliantly distinguished himself, capturing fortress after fortress and repulsing the Duke of Sodermanland, afterwards Charles IX, from Riga. However Rival, Penor, and Noa remained under Swedish control. In 1604 he captured Dorpate, defeated the Swedish generals in the Battle of Weisenstein. For his valour Chodkowicz was rewarded by the king with the Grand Hetman Bulawar of Lithuania. However, the war was neglected by the Commonwealth's parliament, which turned a deaf ear to all his requests for reinforcements and for supplies and money to pay his soldiers. Commonwealth's decentralized financial system meant that the Commonwealth treasury was almost always empty. This flaw plagued Commonwealth for centuries. Chodkowicz nevertheless more than held his own against the Swedes. He instituted a new form of warfare based upon his use of the elite Uzar cavalry and consequently the Swedes were repeatedly defeated again and again in the open field. First the Poles attacked Swedish cavalry, after which they usually attacked demoralized Swedish infantry which was unable to retreat at all, and usually annihilated whole formations of this infantry. In 1605 the Swedes again spent large sums of money to conscript a new massive army. The Riksdag spent much cash on conscripting new formations and as well as this, Russian Tsar Boris Godunov gave the Swedes much financial help likely attempting to keep both Sweden and the Commonwealth busy during the time of troubles. The Swedes were able to hire large numbers of mercenaries, as well as hiring many siege engineers from all over Europe. In 1605, a few miles from Rival, a 5,000-strong army led by Anders Lenitsen of Forstena landed in Estonia again. Several days later another Swedish expedition, numbering around 4,000 and led by Count Frederick Joachim Mansfeld, landed near and besieged the fortress of Dunham under near Riga, although without any success. After this setback they now began laying siege to Riga. Their main mission was to capture this important city, one of the largest Baltic ports. Chodkowicz moved in to relieve the garrison at Riga, but found out that the Swedes were also sending in reinforcements under Lenitsen. Chodkowicz moved in on Lenitsen however he decided not to allow for open battle and retreated into a fortress. On finding out that Charles himself was now marching in with yet more reinforcements, Lenitsen decided to link up with the king and assault Riga together. Chodkovich, who failed to prevent the Swedish forces from joining, moved from CESIs to near Salaspils and Ixkila, where he built his small fortified camp. Charles, who has arrived at Riga on 23 September, learned of the Chodkovich force nearby and decided to destroy it with an attack of majority of Swedish force within the area. On 27 September Swedish force under King Charles moved towards Kirkham. The Battle of Kirkham on September 27, 1605, near Duna River would be Chodkovich's crowning achievement. Chodkovich, having smaller forces, used a feint to force the Swedes off their high position. The Swedes under Charles thought that the Polish-Lithuanians were retreating therefore, they advanced, spreading out their formations to give chase. This is what Chodkowicz was waiting for. The Commonwealth's army now gave fire with their infantry causing the Swedes some losses at which point the Hussars moved into a reformation and charged at the Swedish infantry formations. The Swedish formations broke completely, the king himself fleeing, barely escaping back to his flotilla off the coast. Thus Chodkovich with barely 3,600 troops defeated a Swedish army of 11,000 soldiers, for which feat he received letters of congratulation from the Pope, all the Catholic potentates of Europe, and even from the Sultan of Turkey and the Shah of Persia. Yet this great victory was absolutely fruitless. Owing to the domestic dissensions which prevailed in the Commonwealth during the following five years, 
Chodkovitz's own army, unpaid for years, abandoned him at last en masse in order to plunder the estates of their political opponents, leaving the hetman to carry on the war as best he could with a handful of mercenaries paid out of the pockets of himself and his friends. With tiny, inadequate forces, Chodkowicz nonetheless prevented Swedes from overrunning the entire Inflanti region, helped by a relative inaction of Swedish commanders until 1608. Chodkovich, who was one of the magnates who remained loyal to the king, had to divide his attention between the rebellion against Sigismund in the Commonwealth and fresh invasion of Livonia by the Swedes led by Mansfeld in 1608. Mansfeld captured Dorg of Griva, Viljandi and Connies, but when Chodkovich returned, the tide turned. In 1609 Chodkovich once more relieved Riga besides capturing Panu. Chodkovich also defeated the Swedish flotilla at Salis and finally defeated Mansfeld's army once again near the river Goja. Eventually, a truce was signed in 1611 after the death of Charles IX. It would last until 1617. During the next decade, the Commonwealth was occupied by its war against Russia. Southern borders were also endangered by the constant troubles with the Ottoman Empire in the Magnate Wars.